Welcome to week 12 of our 17 week series as we take you through our building center to give you an in-depth look of our building process of your new Palm Harbor home. We present day two of manufacturing part two. Welcome back folks to Capco's Palm Harbor Building Center in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're going to go through the middle part of the line as we have work being done on the roof and we've covered that in the last few episodes. We're going to show you what's going on here in the middle of the line. As we go forward, here's a gentleman putting in the wire as he brings the wire runs. And you notice this little cut out, this is a dado. That's been cut out in the studs. We're going to show you up further. When he runs that wire through there, he's going to put a steel plate over that. <coughs> Excuse me. That steel plate is going to allow protection for you driving any nails in there. If you're putting on a deck or something on the back of your home, you won't be able to get into that wire. So that wire is going to be protected and it goes in there and runs those runs. He's driving it up through the floor, bringing it into each one of the rooms. Also, let's look at what else is going on here. Notice the windows are triple blocked in. They're squared with extra material. They're also strapped with a steel strap to hold that rigid. When you have that thing rigid and square, it makes the installation of the windows stay that way. When we get it here, when we ship it, when we set it up onto the site, that's done. Notice too our insulation. See this number here? R11 and see how it fills up the wall? That's a resistance to heat or cold. The 11 will give you the depth of what that needs to be to fill up the wall. If it's a 2 by 6 wall, that's going to be a 19. So it shows you what number it is. These guys know what to put it in there. Now that's nice and soft. It's filled up from stud to stud, from bottom to top, and it's well insulated. This will keep your house warmer in the winter, cooler in the summer, and quieter all year round. That's the proper insulation you need in there. The other things you can see, and notice again, once again, we use the finger joint because we are using engineered studs and not any studs that's going to twist and bow on you. This is also building green because it allows me to take the pieces that were used out of the window and repurpose them and use them into the stud walls and get more house built with less trees. That's building green. So let's move on up here and show you what the straps look like. When these straps go on, they're 26 gauge steel. They have a minimum of seven. Sometimes you'll find eight or nine and when the gun gets get real happy with it. But it's seven nails above the floor line and seven below. And that straps that floor down to the rim rail onto the home. And then of course you strap in your windows to make them stay square. These are just little construction things we do to help it keep square so that our windows will go in and the house stays sturdy and of course meet code. Let's move along around here. All right, let's take just a moment. I wanted to show you one of the questions that were sent in to us about our strapping. We strap the floor and the walls together, as you can see here, with those steel strappings one and a half inch wide. The question was, do we strap our roof on to our same wall? And I want you to see if you can turn the camera, and you can see the straps come down the wall that also will bridge the gap line and go across to the roof section so yes, it is strapped from the roof down to the walls, as well as the walls down to the floor. They are strapped. It is tight. Now on the movement from one station, we just showed you back there where the wires are dadoed in on the side of the studs. Let me show you what we do further. We put a wire protector plate that's got a grip. When you drive that in, so this wire falls behind it. If you add anything or put any fasteners onto your home, you're not going to get into that wire because that's got a wire protector plate. Where the wire goes around and up the other side of the wall, we put in a pro sleeve protector. Now if you can turn the camera over here, you can see there's a metal sleeve that's driven in there and that wire will go through that metal sleeve and protect it from having any nails or fasteners that come in from the outside into that wire so you don't have a disruption of your electricity. That's done. That's one of the things we do on there. One of the other things we want to show you is this is a gasket. Now you can think of the gasket as an impervious material. Water will not go through that and it resists water. So this goes onto the wall as the two walls come together. When you take 30 some thousand pounds from one half and press it against another, this gasket will squeeze down to about the thickness of a quarter. When it's sealed on each side, and that'll keep everything from going through there. An ant can't even get through there. No wind, no ant, no nothing. And that will go between the two halves around the perimeter from the top to the bottom and go across the bottom. 
so that it will seal that up. That's done on site. We shipped this already intact and, a, and secured. As you can look up with the camera, you'll see it go around the top and the sides. That will help seal that off as they secure that. When this floor is put together, they will use a six inch lag at a 45 degree angle. That will go through this perimeter into the other perimeter of the other floor and connect through. On a wind zone one, which is what we're in right now, these are set at 36 inches all the way down one side and 36 inches on the other side, but they alternate so they're like 18 inches apart from one side to the other. But that screw will go in there with a big washer and pull these two together. There's a different fastening schedule for the roof system that doesn't use these six inches lag, but the same concept is they'll alternate the two types of fasteners onto the roof. Same thing happens on the end of the home. When these two come together, they will angle screws in at a 45 degree angle and connect these two walls and pull this gasket down real tight as the two halves come together. So that's the setup. All right, during the production process, you've got people working on the tops, on the sides and inside all at the same time, so it's highly efficient. Right here, the drywall is going on. They're taping it in. You can see it's darker. After a while, that's going to dry out, and then they'll be ready to prep it and put the finishes on it. Over here, the guys with the wiring was doing that, as we showed you earlier. He stands along the wire off the studs by putting this piece in, and he's got that in. This box, you see, will not move. That's set on half its gypsum with the wings. So their receptacles are put and switches are put where you need them, not necessarily where there's a stud. So that'll go in there. Also over here at the same time, this drywall is going on. They now start to set, remember we were talking about there were assemblers and installers. You're now setting the cabinets onto the floor. As the drywall dries, these cabinets will be installed and pressed up against the wall. Once again, you see these blocks that are in here? As it comes down to production process, this will be put in place to hold that roof tight. These will keep the house from parallelogramming going down the highway. These are just stock. These come out during the time of setup process. Okay? This man over here has got the hopper working. And what the hopper does when he stands a certain feet away, it blows the texture onto the wall. And he'll set that up and it'll make it a nice smooth texture. It goes on dark, it dries lighter color. But it goes from top, connecting the ceiling in to the side walls, the walls in the interior of the room. That's the hopper process. All right, one more item we wanted to show you as we're going through the production line, you notice how the insulation is all set in nice and snug and tight. Well, this is not the wall that the siding goes directly to. There's one more process. This is very important. Every home we build, we put an air infiltration barrier onto the home. It still allows the house to breathe. It still allow it to be able to get the moisture in it, still breathe, but it stops any transference of wind. If you get wind blowing 50 miles an hour on the outside, that's not gonna allow that air to be blown on the inside. Every house gets an air wrap around every one of our homes before we put the siding on. That's a great function. Now, if you see things on here or from last week or any other episode that you may have a question about, look at the information below and email us or drop us a line and ask your questions and we'll see if we can incorporate them into what we're talking about as we go through the regular processes in the future coming weeks. Thanks and have a great day.